Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning into another episode of the Misfit Podcast. On today's show, we welcome very, very, very special guest, CrossFit Games champion Justin Lasala, OG Misfit. Yep. Welcome to the show, Justin. Thank you. Uh, before we get into the interview with Justin, want to make sure that you head to the link in bio on our Instagram. We are getting into the final countdown on being able to get signed up for training camp. Uh, it's just outside Philadelphia at CrossFit Raid, October 11th through the 13th. Make sure you head there and get signed up as soon as possible. Um, Justin, we do something at the beginning of every episode before we start talking fitness called Life Chat. Um, and it could be an anecdote, uh, could be something stupid, can be basically anything um, and I don't want to say not fitness related cause I would say half of the ones that we have are fitness related. Um, we'll let you go last. So, uh, I'm going to talk about golf for content. Yeah. Hunter's so. going to talk about golf 100%. <laughs> um, I'll probably talk about the fact that I feel old. Um, I definitely felt old at the masters CrossFit games. I can tell you that. So saw, <laughs> saw someone saw a 53 year old run a, a deadlift run time at the same amount of time that it took the 35 year olds and was like, there's just no way. There's no way. Unbelievable. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, uh, these are not, uh, trendy blue blockers. Your boy is, we're coming full circle. These are actually glasses, like prescription glasses. <laughs> fucking nerd. So my, my zone two heart rates in the fucking one thirties. I have a kid, my hair's turning gray. It's happening guys. I'm getting old. It's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> On the down slope. That's what I, I tell. I joke with people about that all the time. Hunter, what you got? Fuck. All right. So there I was waiting outside the gate of Nunsuch River Golf Club, TPC Nunny, as we like to call it. It's nowhere near that nice. Uh, it is what we thought we, so a group of friends and I usually try to sneak out early like 645 like is when it has been recently but as the sun started coming up later tea times are start the first tea times are starting later so we don't get into the gate in like basically i don't get to the first tea box until like 7 10 and i have to be at the gym no later than 8 45 so nine holes in like a little under an hour and a half and then like get to the gym to to be here on time and I'm like, fuck. All right, I'll probably only get through like seven or eight holes, six or seven holes, and then I'll have to just like go to my car and, you know, pack it in. Start off, and I am even par through eight holes. And I'm like, God fucking damn it. Like, I can't not finish this nine hole round um, to, to try to shoot an even nine hole round, which would be fucking cool we get to the 17th hole because i'm playing the back so this eighth out of ninth hole that i'm gonna play and jimmy god love his heart jimmy's the greenskeeper over at none such he screams at you because he's just around like lawn mowers and green rollers all day so anytime he talks to you he's just screaming at you because his ears don't work um he is rolling the greens, which means it's removing all of the dew and it's like firming the green up. So now this green specifically is different than the other greens that we've played because he's, he just rolled that one. I proceed to bogey that and I am now running. So I'm now, I'm now, I'm now on a, like a 10 minute clock to finish the last two holes and try to shoot an even par round. 17th hole, I really, really soft putt. Uh, because I was worried that the greens were going to be a lot faster than they were, which is what happens when you roll it. Bogeyed it, sprinted to the 18th tee, and made par, and shot one over, and still made it to class on time. But I'm just fucking saying, like, if Jimmy wasn't out there on 17, rolling the <laughs> greens, changing up my changing up my vibe, might have been an even par round. But shot Did one over on nine. Did you play faster before that? 
like uh, we less were, practice well, swings and, kind of a thing? Me and I mean, we we don't fuck around. Me, Alex Cardamoni, and then the other a couple other dudes that I play with, we 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 move pretty quick in general. They were they were only I finished on 18 and they were on the tee box. So there was only a few minutes difference. And so we, the reason I ask that quick, is like, so. could there have been an element of like less thinking because you had to get it done? And Sometimes. The golf yeah, we, we say that, but there, I, I'll, I might also like, if I go out there tomorrow and do that, I might be fucking 12 over doing the same thing. Well, yeah. Or, I'm saying you yeah. couldn't like, you didn't try to do it like in baseball when I yeah. was super angry at the plate. I was a fucking machine, I but you couldn't assumed, manufacture that by like, you know, yeah. you, you can't like, like the guy's talking shit about me in the parking lot before. Like I can't make I that up. There's a lot <laughs> to be said about not fucking giving a shit and going to play golf, like yeah. a game, a game like golf and playing really well. So, um, yeah, I was like, fuck, like if I accidentally play well this morning, like I have to finish these nine holes and I'm going to have to run. And I accidentally played well and I ran. So, I came in glistening a little bit, but it was worth it. Justin, do you golf? I'm a terrible golfer. I don't have the patience <laughs> for golf. Um, I give a ton of credit. It, it, you know what? It, it's like anything. You got to put the time in, and golf takes a lot of time. You know, like Cross you just takes a lot of time. Right, yeah. <laughs> you're right too. 100. <laughs> percent it's, there's a lot of similarities to that for sure. But if you're doing CrossFit and golfing, you know, I mean, something's. You're not put, bringing your attention somewhere, I think. And running yeah. a business, you know, obviously you got some stuff there. But I, I, I do play golf. I probably look like a better golfer than I actually am a golfer. You know, people see me. I look fairly athletic. I have a natural swing. But yeah. once I start hitting the ball, it goes all over the place. And the people are like, oh, my God, who, do I, who am I playing with today? Most of your response about. could have just been copied and pasted to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what you got for life chat, Justin? What's going on? Yeah, you know what? I mean, running a business is always an interesting process. You know, we had a uh, 5 a.m. class maybe about about a month ago, and the coach calls me and was like, hey, Justin, the water's out. The water main out front um, busted, and they're out on the street doing it. We're able to run classes, but just as a heads up, you know, be aware. So... Yeah. You know, Evelyn gets to the gym, my girlfriend slash co-owner, and, you know, she calls me around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, whatever time it is. And she's like, uh, I hear water dripping, but I don't really, I can't see anything, you know? Um, and next thing you know, she, she, again, we're on the phone. She screams, oh my God, you know, and the, the ceiling tiles come crashing down. No. Okay. You know, long story short, basically what wound up happening is, is eventually when they did turn the water on, okay, that pressure, you know, just busted one of our, uh, our our pipes that lead to our hot water heater, which happens to be in the ceiling for some reason, but whatever it may be, all right, it um, it explodes and the water just, you know, she, she hears the water dripping, but it took a while for everything to get heavy enough for it to come crashing down. So, um you know, I guess, you know, life lesson is, is that, you, you know, things like this are always going to come into play, you know, like she was, it scared the heck out of her. I told her to go outside and get the water people so they can turn off the water because she didn't know where the water main was. But while that's happening, the gym is, you know, just flooding with water. All right. It happens to be right where our, our turf area is. Like if it was on the blacktop, wouldn't really be a big deal. But our whole turf got soaking wet, so you know had to be. You know, three days later, eventually, you know, we we got it all fixed, and um, luckily, I know some people, and they were all, they were able to come by and cap, you know, our water, um, so that we could at least continue to run classes before, you know, all right, we don't, we, we canceled our PM classes, but um, it did give us the ability to run classes until we got the uh, the water heater fixed, but you know. These are all the things that happen in a business. Um, it's par for the course, you know, not to use a golf reference. And, um, you know, but in the end of the day, it all worked out. Next day we had classes. Everything was back to normal. And, uh, and that's the lesson, you know, like you're going to get hard moments and difficult challenges in life. But I think tomorrow's another day. 
um, and you know you can really start to move forward in a positive direction. Yeah, you definitely get desensitized to it as a small business owner. The first time or two that you get a call like that, it feels like the world is ending. And then now it's like, oh, there's a leak in the roof and it's raining in your office. And I'm like, all right, make a couple phone calls. I'll be in in a minute. Like it's me, you know, losing my mind and driving here as fast as I can and doing X, Y, and Z is not going to help anything. But you, you definitely have to get some, gain some life experience that way to, to feel that way about it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so I want to essentially begin the episode and end the episode with like, congratulations, you won the CrossFit games. Incredible. <laughs> um, but I do want to take people through your kind of origin story a little bit. So, um, I think your history in athletics, your history in CrossFit as a, as a methodology and your history at the CrossFit games are all really kind of fascinating. And, and I'm not sure how many people know that. Um, but like I said, before we get to that, um, you know, we've been coaching at the CrossFit games for, for 14 years now. Um, you standing on top of that podium was the 10th podium that we've had across all divisions and the very first CrossFit games champion. Um, and we've gotten a chance to get to know you over the years and the way that you carry yourself, the way that you work, the way that you grind, I think embodies a lot of what we believe in at Misfit Athletics. So for the very first one to be you, it was fucking fantastic. And like, again, just want to say congratulations from myself and everyone here. And then, I'm, you know, a lot of people in the community reached out to me as well. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it, people ask me, how does it feel? It feels great. <laughs> You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, it does. It, it, it feels really good. I think when it happens at first, you know, there's a lot of things that are kind of going through your head. So maybe you don't, you know, have that, you know, smile on your face. And again, I was super happy when it was done. It, it never felt like a relief, too. It had been a long time for me to uh, get to this opportunity. And um, I wasn't like, oh, thank God. God, it's over, and I did it. Got it like monkey off the back. I never, I never really had that feeling. Um, I think that's actually one of the things that's helped me be successful in the fact that I'm disciplined to do the training all the time. And there wasn't, there was probably every event that I went into at games this year. I would say to myself, "Listen, it's it's a Wednesday, all right, you know, but it's just it's Wednesday with Toto Bar." burpee and power cleans just execute the training you've been doing all year and for all the years and um and and make it happen really i mean uh yeah i mean my 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 story you know through the whole crossfit is i i opened up a uh an affiliate in, in 2012 i got hooked up with you guys in like 14 or 15 i think it was my first games was in 17 I, I mean, for anybody who's struggling to get the games, I never thought I was going to make it to games, you know? I mean, every year I had that mentality after 13, after 14, after 15. And, well, 16, I had a uh, I had a hernia surgery, so, I mean, I wasn't 100%. But I always had that feeling like, hey, you got to keep working. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. I mean, I think I think that, for, for me at least, that was a motivating factor. Like, hey, you... you you're not there yet. You got to keep practicing this or you ha you're weak at that. And I think that mentality and the fact that I really took the time to learn all the movements to the best of my ability instead of, you know, just trying to learn butterfly when I shouldn't have been butterflying just because I thought I needed to do it. All right. Mm. And it wound up hurting. Like I, I learned strict ring muscle up first before bar, before like almost chest to bar pull up. And it messed up all of my moves. I had to reteach myself all these exercises. And, but I, I really did. I broke them all down. Um, uh, I got better every year. And I had the mentality that at first, hey, you're not there yet T to, hey, you're just as good as everybody else. 2014 was huge for me. That gave me confidence because I won Granite Games and there were some pretty good, you know, guys in that division. And that gave me the confidence that I was good enough. I missed it the next uh, two years. But once I made it to 17, I haven't missed it since. So um, that's really been a uh, uh, something I'm proud of, that once I've made it, I've continued to make it regardless if it's been 10 or, or 20. And you've been in the top 10, say 18 
2018 was 13th, but otherwise, 8th, 2nd, 3rd, 7th, ninth, 1st. It's got to be fucking kind of cool to see in your CrossFit Games profile. Like, <laughs> like I, got a one, I got a 1, 1 next to 2024, but when, and yeah, I, when you said start, what, how old were you in 2017? You were in the 40 or 44, were you 40? Yeah, I was, uh, I'm that guessing. was... That, no, Based 40 on. to 44 was my fourth year in that division. 2018, okay, got it. 2018, okay. 2018, I got lucky. They went back to uh, 20. 20 athletes, right? And um, uh, that was the year Neil Maddox won. So in 2018, I had the opportunity to, uh, you know, I had a little bit more of a buffer. I didn't have to be top 10. Even though I was top 10, I think I was ninth that year after the uh, – that's when they used to have the AGOQ um, yep. to qualify. But, uh, you know, Hunter, you uh, you look at that profile on my CrossFit, you know, you know what stands out to me is 2020. Because in 2019, I was uh, uh, at the bottom of the bracket at 45. And I just, I felt like that year I was winning it, no doubt. And Joel beat me, you know, he was better. There's no doubt that year. And 2020, I was... I was angry. Like I, I, there was, if we, if there was games in 2020 that year, there was no way I wasn't winning. There was no way that that's kind of how I, I felt like that year. I just, I missed so much that year because again, I have two years before people like Kern get in my division and, and grub. So I have a, a, a pretty two year, a nice two year window where I can really do some special things. Um, so 2020 was really a missed year. And when this year rolled around um, in when I graduated to 50, um, I, I really had a lot of that same mentality. Um, I, I, I just, I really felt like this was my year. It really was. And I thought the changes that they had made to games benefited me uh, a lot. I think having a field of 30, because I'm so well-rounded, if you look at my scores this year, outside of the snatch, which was a little uncharacteristic of me, I don't think I should have done that poorly. I should have hit 195, but you know, everybody kept, keeps asking me, you always hit that weight, you know? I mean, I just wasn't feeling good in the warm-up area. It wasn't a good snatch day for me, and that's really what it came down to. But outside of those two finishes, the one rep max front squat, which I think I took seventh, and then the 15th in the snatch workout, I was top four for the next eight workouts. So, I mean, that consistency really helps me out in a field of 30 and over a 10-workout period. So, um, yeah, I felt like this was my year. I was going after it, and – um and, and, and it worked out. I, I made it. I did it. How did you find CrossFit? You said you started your gym in 2012. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I used to work for a, a, a company called the Parisi Speed School. I was a, a, a speed and conditioning coach. And the building that we were in was humongous. It had an indoor 40-yard track and where we would run the kids because obviously, you know, speed and conditioning. And it just wasn't making enough money. And I was only there for maybe a month and the director came in and they had this big sit down of, Hey, we may have to close the doors. And they talked about, we, we talked about, I brought up to them, Hey, you guys only open this gym from like four o'clock to eight o'clock at night. You don't do anything during the day. And that's when boot camps were starting to get pretty big. Um, uh, like the fit body boot camps and those group training classes, so I actually got certified in um, this thing called Training for Warriors, which is Martin Rooney, who was one of the guys that worked at uh, Parisi Speed School. And I got a, uh, my CrossFit. And the owner said to me, he's like, hey, what do you think we should do? You know, should we go with this one or go with that one? And that's when CrossFit, this is 2011. So that's when like CrossFit was just just about to take off. I, I mean, I think the yeah. I think that was the 20, Reebok year. Yeah, the 2010 to 20. 12 to 2013 it started to get some momentum and then i think 14 through like 16 17 it was at its height i would think as far as like you know even from yeah. people who weren't doing crossfit they still had heard about it it was getting to you know the the globo gyms and personal and everybody was starting to kind of get a little bit of a it was starting to get a lot of momentum i would say um so we opened up an affiliate in december of 2012 um, and then in 2019, I, I went my own way. Yeah. So that's how I got, uh, that's how I got hooked up in CrossFit. 
So you essentially, I mean, 2020, you were third in your age, you know, the AGOQ, you're going to the CrossFit game. So I would say essentially eight, eight straight years, um, you've gone to the CrossFit games. When you think about the way that you treat your season and, you know, the games are normally in August, you don't start competing until the spring, you're in the master's category how do you train? How do you look at the year as a whole to make sure that you actually stay healthy enough to put up leaderboard, you know, placements like this every single year? Yeah, I mean, I, I follow what you guys send me, honestly. I mean, I now, with that said, I make adjustments, um, whether I, I do a long warm up again. I mean, I've done this for a long time. My, my warm up is probably like 15 to 20 minutes then i do a prep portion after that i always tell myself um don't make adjustments to the workout until after that warm-up area a uh, warm-up time mm. okay all right because i'm older i wake up and you know i'm like limping but once i get moving a little <laughs> bit you know once i get moving a little bit i feel a little bit better so i don't want to wake up and say oh i'm not going to deadlift this weight or i'm going to change things i, I kind of wait till my warm-up is area warm up is over and then i make my decision on you know how heavy am i going to get you know if i'm not feeling great i do the work but maybe i'll just maybe i'll focus on doing unbroken sets then really incorporating a, a, a big high intensity you know when i do get the workouts for the week i kind of look at where my spots will be for high intensity because i just don't think you can kill it every day um, and, and get a lot of the, the work you, that you need that's that's maybe necessary for you. So I do kind of see cer certain workouts and I pick my spots um, as, far, for, as far as intensity. But I, I definitely scale things back. You know, I mean, you guys, you're, you're providing content to people. So there's a lot of things on the sheet. And again, I don't think most people can get to all of it every day right. all the time and we don't intend for them to which exactly. I think is important right as well. it'll yeah. say pick yeah. two or pick one depending on the day depending on the stimulus so I, yeah. again i i try to do that um you know even sometimes because i'm running a gym because i i do personal training with members and i and i coach some classes here and there i also look at it like you know maybe wednesday's you know ktb work might fit better in on tuesday so i i, I make adjustments like that too as well um but normally what i do is i only have one workout time frame unless i incorporate swimming um where i have to go to another location or i have to go to a track um i'll work out usually between 10 30 and 12 uh, i'm sorry 10 30 and 1 and again i do a long warm-up you know i'll do my lift or you know i'll even mix it up sometimes and do the conditioning first and then do the lift second you know it really just depends on you know how i'm feeling but I'm disciplined to do it. I realize that I'm not going to be able to crush every day. Um, you know, maybe some days I'm going really heavy. Maybe some days I'm going really fast. But with all that said, I try to be as smart as I can, depending on how I feel on that day. That's probably the best way to explain it. And and I make adjustments too. Like I know I'm not great at wall ball. So, you know, if there's some sort of squatting thing in there, I'll maybe substitute wall ball. Um, or I'll substitute total bar over GHD or vice versa. If my hands are just raw from doing a lot of volume. So I think I, I, I mean, I like to think I take a smart way of approaching it. Um, yes, but that's how I do it. Um, how do you, how do you modulate when you, you know, at, at what point do you take, say you need like a week off or a deload week? Cause that's, that's one thing that we've always, um, I don't want to say struggled with, but it's like there was one period where it would be like, hey, we're, here's a program deload week. And then it was, well, people don't like that. And then it's now it's kind of like, hey, we we encourage you. You need to take a deload sometime during this nine week block because, you know, you're saying you can't go high intensity every single day. That's accurate. You also can't go high intensity every like from at the beginning of the season to the end of the season without taking like weeks here and there. So how do you approach like a deload type scenario? And, and maybe, maybe do you, do you increase your training volume as we get closer to the games? Does it taper off and the intensity increases? Like what's that, what does that kind of look like for you? Yeah, Hunter, that's developed over years. You know, I mean, at first, right. 
I would hear like D load and like D load. I'm trying to get to the games here, you know. Like I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna add fifty total bar. I'm gonna add this. I'm I think yeah. over the years because I have a lot of experience now and a lot of time in that I know I'm not gonna I'm not missing out. I think I think a lot of times we just we think about oh my god. I, I, um, you, you follow other athletes and you're like, oh, I need to be doing a uh, reverse hyper now. You know, I need to do this. I think it took time for me to create a, 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 a program or create times where, hey, you can take some rest time. All right. I mean, early on, it was tough to take rest days, especially because I'm a high motor type guy anyway. But what I didn't realize I didn't realize that even when I coach classes, that exerts a lot, you know? I mean, like class That's could take exhausting. a lot. Yeah, it could take a lot out of you physically and mentally. Um, and I, when I was coaching a lot of classes, you know, I felt myself kind of burning out, you know? So even I would say to myself, hey, listen, even if you don't get in your 90-minute session or two-hour session, whatever it may be, you're still coaching three hours. That's going to that's gonna take some toll on you. So, um, you know, understanding that realizing that it takes as big of a toll on you and doing a hard session and coaching a bunch of classes and doing a bunch of PTs is, you know, is going to kind of fry you for maybe a day or two. So that process took time and I've probably trained less and less every year. Now I put that in a, a certain context because I've learned pretty much all the movements, you know, I'm not like a, a new athlete into this sport where I'm trying to learn how to be an efficient rope climber. I'm trying to maximize my total bar sets and, 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 and do higher volume, you know, because I've been in it a long time, you know, I don't, I don't sit there and need to learn new movements. So I, I do understand maybe an athlete who's just kind of getting into the sport now has that mentality. Like I did early on, Hey, I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to do more. So I, Again, as a coach, I try to stress to them, you don't need to do more. You need to be smarter about, you know, how you do it. It's not about maybe it's more skill work than heavy lifting, but it also depends on the athlete. I mean, maybe it is more lifting than skill work because you might be just a ninja, you know, or vice versa. You might just be really strong and you need to get your cardio up. So um, so to answer your question, I think the best way is it took a long time to develop a program. Um, to deload from a mental standpoint, like, hey, it's okay. Take a rest week. Take, take, do some classes. Um, you know, like lower the intensity volume. You go swimming. That that's actually something that's been really beneficial to me. Is I, I've been swimming a lot more. Um, it makes my body feel really good. Um, uh, you know, it it it's it's still a a hard workout. You know, but I don't feel like I'm totally shred it or, or just, you know, beat down after, you know, I don't know, yesterday I did like 75 front squats, you know, <laughs> you know, I feel that today. <laughs> yeah. It's one thing that's interesting here that I think is important for people to, to pluck out of this is essentially anyone can bash their head against the wall and fry their central nervous system. But from like a muscular standpoint, if I give Justin an AMRAP and I give a beginner the same AMRAP and it's, you know, simple, the amount of reps that you're going to do, the amount that you're going to be able to get out of this. And then in turn, what that's going to do to your body is going to be very different. So like you can get a lot more out of a piece than somebody else in this instance. So you don't need to, you don't need to accumulate two, three, four pieces in a day to be able to have that adaptation from like a muscular cellular level within your body. Like you hold on to that, you gain that conditioning. And I think, I think a lot of people don't think about it from that perspective. Once you've gotten yourself to a certain level, you can do a lot of damage in one or two pieces. Um, and it takes a while to get there. Like you said, especially as the, the movements become more complex. Um, so, you know, if you were to bury yourself at a muscular level and your CNS simultaneously all the time, like that's when the 22 year old athlete, they turn 23 or 24 and they're like, please stop, please help me. <laughs> Cause they get to that point where it's finally caught up to them and that becomes super challenging. Um, 
one of the things that I like to do as a remote coach when an athlete's struggling with how fast they're progressing up the leaderboard is find examples of your like household names within the sport and show them their trajectory through on their games page. So like if someone you mentioned, someone's listening to this, they're a master's athlete, they have the goal to get to the CrossFit games. If they go to your, um, if they go to your page, we start down in 2014, um, 72nd in the world in your online qualifier. Then we get to 2015, you come in 28th. You mentioned 2016 was a hernia. Is yep. that what you said? Yep. So that's 44th. And then 2017, 10th place. Those are the kinds of trajectories that you can look at and be like, if I keep my head down and do the things that I'm supposed to, I can reach that. But for some people, that four-year stretch is hell and it's too much. So I guess the that's sort of a comment. And then the question is, did something happen in that 2017 season or did you feel like it was just a natural progression continue to put your head down and work? Yeah, I, I do think it was a natural progression. I think the injury hurt me. I think I would have made it the year before. Um, actually, the one year I thought I was going to make it was 15 before I had my hernia. But I said to myself, I remember sitting, waiting for the workout to come out. And I said, I'm going to make it unless there's a one rep max deadlift. And there was a one rep max deadlift. <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't make it. I think that was like, I forget where I finished up that year, 28th or 28th. something like that. Yeah, 28th. So yeah. Uh, that 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 was just, uh, and and I deadlifted like crazy that year, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, so, but Drew, to answer that question, I, I think it was a natural progression. I just think this is a really hard sport. You know, I mean, it really is. You you need to have a lot of really good skills and you need to have a high motor and you need to be strong. I look at some of the guys in this year's games and you're and like and, and they're games champion who did really, really poorly on the front squat, you know, like 15th or worse, maybe even lower. Um, you know, I took top 10 still. So I think you need to be really strong. You need to also be able to, you know, have a high motor um, and you need to be able to do all the skills. I mean, if you, you know, if you followed my division, you know, again, that's the one I can probably speak most educatedly about. But, you know, the two guys that were in front of me going into the final workout were bigger guys that may have struggled on that. You can make the assumption that maybe they're going to struggle on some of the gymnastics and they did. Um, And, uh, you know, and I was, I mean, Look, when the workouts came out, I was chomping my I, those the first work uh, actually the the third workout and the last workout were the workouts I circled as wheelhouse. Like those are opportunities; those are first place finishes if you can, can if you can get after it. Um, but again, I think that it was just just the, for me personally the natural progression. And you're right; those four years. And, you know, for some people, it might be six years or three years or whatever, whatever that number is. Um, Those are really hard. And I and I attribute wrestling, the sport of wrestling, um, because that's such a really hard sport. And you're again, I think the fact that I was a good wrestler, all those attributes translated to CrossFit. Hey, you're out there by yourself. Okay, it's you and the bar or you and the workout. It it's going to hurt. How, how much can you hurt, um, you know, you know, how, how, you know, mentally strong can you be? I mean, there, there's nothing worse than, you know, feeling really horrible and then having someone like on top of you and you're like, get off of me already. You know, that's very much like, you know, picking up the bar and having five left and you're thinking like, oh, five doesn't seem like such a big number, but each rep is just so awful and the last thing you want to do is pick up that bar, but you, you got to pick up the bar. You got to do it, you know, or pick up that sandbag. That's funny. Someone, someone asked me, I don't remember when, I think it was an affiliate athlete recently asked me what sport I thought translated best to success in CrossFit. And I was like, 
wrestling or mixed martial arts. And I think hockey is another one. And I'm just from like an energy system standpoint, but also like, yeah, re- like wrestling and, and jujitsu, like those sorts of things are so fucking miserable, like from a, like a physical and metabolic standpoint, but also the, all the things that you just said, like kind of out there alone and afraid. It's very much like you are fully responsible for your own success or failure. And if you want to, and if you want to do well, like there is a, a level of pain tolerance and, and just sheer grit that you have to have to, to succeed in the sport. It's like, yeah, those are the, those are the ones. <laughs> there are uh, Instagram clips of the Iowa wrestling coach that I've been getting into. And now of course they're serving them to me more and it's, it couldn't be more perfect. Like his nose is bent sideways, <laughs> cauliflower ear. Of course he has a thick crew neck sweatshirt on, you know, they've got the gymnasium at like 80 degrees, whatever it is. And the interview is like, what did you guys do today at practice? And he's like, we got better. And the guy's like, yeah. So like <laughs> you, you blah, 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 blah. Like what did, what did you guys do to get better? He goes, we got better. And <laughs> he goes, how long is practice? He goes, as long as it takes. And then he just turned around and walked away. And they had like, like cut shots to him standing there watching. And like, he could intimidate, I think he could intimidate anyone on earth to be a good wrestler. Just watching this guy was like terrifying. And I had actually listened to another athlete talk about this where it's like, like you said, Justin, you're on your own. Um, Like when you're playing a team sport, the bus is fun. You like, you go to a football game, you go to a baseball game and away game and you're, you know, dicking around on the bus or whatever. And it was very much like that doesn't happen on the wrestling bus. Everyone is in their own seat. They're like, like not saying a word to each other. You're literally about to go fight someone in front of your high school or whatever. And it's just like, I understand why, you know, you got your Chandler Smith and Brandon Luckett. You got these people that learned how to go there and do that. I actually didn't know that you were a wrestler, Justin. Did you do that in high school? I did. I did that. Yeah. Um, I actually was getting recruited a lot to wrestle in college, but I was dropping so much weight from, uh, I went, uh, my, my senior year, I weighed 186 pounds, but I wrestled at 160. So, uh, so I was cutting a lot of weight and all the coaches that were recruiting me were recruiting me to be a 158 pounder, which was two pounds more than I had currently been cutting. And I just wasn't interested. I wanted to go to college, have a little bit of fun. So uh, yeah. I didn't yeah. feel like just cutting the weight the whole the whole time. But you know what else too and about wrestling and, and CrossFit chair? There's no hiding, you know? There's nowhere to hide. You know, you're out there, yeah. you're a judge watching you, you know, um, you know, whether fans are watching you or not. Um the, it's it it's it's you out there. So, you know, I mean, I think it's one of those sports where you're responsible. I also think that that's the same thing too. There's a, there's a mutual respect. You know, when, when I got the games, I, I knew all those people were doing the same work as me, you know? I mean, they didn't get there if they weren't, you know, maybe there's one or two like freak outliers, but the majority of those guys and girls, um, they're all putting in the work, you know, they're all doing the same stuff. So 19 and 21, um, COVID year, you know, no games for, for masters, um, 19 and 21 year on the podium. Um, what does that do to you in the aftermath of it? Um, is it, I wish I had been another step up on the podium. Is it like fuel for the fire? Like, what does that do to you mentally going into, you know, you've got 22, 23, 24. Yeah, for sure. 2019 was fuel to the fire. No doubt. Um, like I, again, I, I had every expectation of winning games in 2019. Um, and it didn't happen so that I was extremely motivated in 21. Um, you know, we had a really strong field and, and I had some of my best workouts. I mean, I, I did some really good things in 2021 and actually I, I think I might've caught Kern in 2021 which still haunts me to this day. 10 points. Yeah, so 10 points. Kern's 10 points ahead of me. Number one, um, he picked up like three points or whatever the scoring was because the guy, uh, we did the swim event, and as he was running out of the water, 
turn past somebody on the run out of the water. Okay. All oh. right. Because the guy was just like walking and jogging, kind of like slowly jogging to the finish line. <laughs> and there was a significant amount of space, you know, between the end of the water and the finish line. And the guy just kind of jogged. Maybe he didn't realize that Mike was right behind him and Mike ran past him. So I would have picked up points there. Um, if, uh, if Bob Jennings runs out of the water, that's number one. And then number two, if CrossFit, and I normally don't bash CrossFit, but if CrossFit would have allowed us to maybe do the jump rope on a, a, a mat instead of on that the turf. That infuriated me to watch so fucking much. I'm like, you fucking clowns. Are you kidding me? That, that was such a wheelhouse workout for me. Um, and I think I took third in that workout. And I must have, I, I don't think I ever messed up more on double unders in my life. And I still took like top five for sure. Um, but that, that, those two workouts, I would have beat Kern and uh, I would have had some bragging rights for at least a year or two. So uh, that was a year that definitely upset. But I mean, 21, after 21, I was like, hey, you're still pretty good. You know, like these guys who come up, um, you know, Obviously, Grub Grub's on a, you know definitely uh, on a different level than I'm where I'm at right now, and uh, you know he beat me. I was right there uh, to, to to beat Mike, but I didn't. And so after 21, I felt really good. You know, uh, the next two years, year four and year five in that age bracket, those are almost kind of fun years because I knew I was good enough to make it. But the likelihood of me podium were, were getting slimmer, especially in my last year. So I was really just able to have some fun at games. You know, it really didn't feel like, hey, pressure's on to win. Um, it, it was more of just like having, you know, really getting a chance to enjoy, and, and enjoy myself. And I used 20, uh, 23 as a year where I was like, you know what, just try some things. All right. Maybe, maybe learn that, hey, I can, you know, come really hot out of the gate and hold, you know, X amount of time at a certain pace because, you know, maybe next year I might need that information when I'm making my run at trying to win it all. You know, so in 2023, I, 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 I took a couple of bigger jumps on the weights. You know, I, I took a little bit of a different approach on a workout and went a little bit more aggressive or I went a little bit more conservative and said, Hey, what does conservative do? And then go, you know, so I can, you know, push towards the end, you know, how does that serve me in these, you know, we had a field of only 10 that year. Um, so I, again, it, it, it allowed me to kind of, you know, test the waters on a couple of different workouts and a couple of different things. Maybe you're thinking in your head, but you're not willing to risk it because, you know, maybe you have a chance to podium and you're playing it safe. I, I had the opportunity to just, you know, just try some things and be aggressive at certain points in 2023. And I think some of those lessons I I learned or information that I gathered during that time served me really well this year, for sure. So, so you age up this year, uh, first year in the 50 to 54. I know you were excited for that. Um, you still have to go out there and be the fittest person there and you age up at the same time as Jamie McGarva, Sean Ramirez and Joel Hughes. You're bringing these people with you um two of which, you know, CrossFit Games multiple multiple time CrossFit Games champions. I believe Joel was the one that that kind of dominated in the what was the that was 2019 maybe? Uh Joel beat me in 2019, yes. Really really I just remember him you know, sort of across the board, having a really great year that year. So you did age up and, and, you know, you sort of alluded to the fact that last year you were trying some things out to, to better yourself for 2024, but you still have to go do it. Right. So like, like, I think a lot of people have that, like they put shit off into the future type mentality of like, Oh, everything's going to be better when, and then they continue to do so. You very much, you were dead serious about what you wanted to happen very specifically within 2024. And then you went and delivered. Um, how did you feel about training or, or competing against those guys specifically versus the rest of the field? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, Sean is a multi-games champion. Joel won games. Um, actually, we had four games champions in my division this year. Uh, Arthur Komorowski, who uh, had the, I think he had the, he had a foot injury. He was the one who mm. had won last year in 23. Um, yep. Robbie Davis was a champion in like 2014 and 20 or 2015 and 16, I think, um, mm. uh, in his age group. So he was a former champion. So we had a loaded field. Um, but I was really focused on, on doing what I needed to do. Again, I knew those guys were there and you have to be mindful of, you know, who, who's in your division. But, you know, I was just focused on, you know, doing, pl- playing my game. All right. Um, I think after, after day one, I felt really good because I, I thought those workouts were good for me. Um, I knew day two, uh, I, I put it this way. Day two was my worst day as far as how the field, how the workouts laid out for me. Um, and after doing poorly in the snatch, which actually I thought I would be my best workout out of day two. Um, I, I didn't let, I didn't let it bring me down. I mean, I, that was my after, next question. Yeah. After that, that my, yeah. after that 15th finish, I went into first, I was in first place going into day two and that 15th, 15th place finish knocked me down to like third. I, I, I just, I, I remember having a conversation with myself saying, Hey, I still have eight, uh, six workouts to do. There's plenty of time. I'll ca- I'm going to run these guys down. You know, that's gotta be the mentality and going into the wall ball workout that has step ups with 50 pound dumbbells for a guy who has like no legs at all, you know? All right. That, that was a workout that that, that was a huge workout for me because that was the next wor- next workout after the snatch, and I did really well in it. I think I took third or fourth in that workout. Third and yep, what, seven, and, uh, five. Sorry, five. Go no, num- number five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, third. Yeah, third. So I took third place in that. That was the seventy-five wall ball double dumbbell push press for forty thirty box step over is forty dumbbell snatch, and then the wall ball. Actually, you know, again sometimes. You think you hear things. I, I thought I heard the guy say 10 seconds. He must have said 20 seconds. So I just kept going. And, you know, I was just counting in my head. I know I can get probably three reps in 10 seconds. So I, was, I got that third rep. I dropped the ball. And then I hear 10 seconds. I pick the ball back up. I do one rep when I probably could have got a couple extra. And Sean beat me by one rep in that workout, too. So, you know, I had a couple of close ones. But um, that workout, I mean, I, I was, I was, I, after that workout, I was like, yep, that's it. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. And the next workout after that was a total bar workout, which I did well in. I think, again, I was the top four finish. Um, uh, and then, you know, and then I came back for, for day three, which had some other workouts in there that were good for me. But um, after that 15th finish, I just, I, I didn't let it bring me down. I, I, I still kept telling myself, this is your year. This is the year you're going to do it. No doubt. I can't, I'm going to tr- ask you to, to potentially explain it more, but at the very least, I know for a fact that there are people who haven't bounced back from an event like that and it completely changed the trajectory of their whole career within the sport. They have this moment, it's in front of a bunch of people, they can't get out of that headspace, they can't go back out there and, and get after it when they should be able to, they contain the physical capacity to do so. So at the very least, an exclamation point on you saying that for people listening, like that is gonna happen to almost every single person for however many different reasons, right? Because it's like you went fourth, third, first, third, third, fourth, seven, second, with a 15th mixed in into that, right? And yep. so it's like, what's the most important thing there? It's not 15th. It's that you went 15th, third, third. Like you took that and you did something with it. And I don't know if you can explain how you were able to do that, um, but I think it's important for people to, to hear that those are actually potentially choices that you can make to get right back after it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just you know, con- continuing to just believe in the fact that this goal is attainable and the 15 isn't gonna, I mean, listen, it's not a good thing. It's not a, you know, I mean, it's, it's a poor finish, obviously, but 
be again, you know what, Drew, if it was a little bit later on in the, in the workout, you, you know, in the, in the competition, you know, maybe it does affect me earlier, but it is its first workout day two of four days. So I think th- that definitely probably helped me, you know, yeah. um, it didn't turn into, Oh, here we go again, another second or another third. Um, it was early on. And, uh, and again, I mean, just the fact that reinforcing to yourself that, Hey, you're just as good as all these guys. Also the 15th wasn't indicative of what my normal performance was like, especially in that workout. You know, I I really just chalked it up to, I just, again, even in the warm up area, I just wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling snappy, you know? All right. Things were just a little bit slower. You know, it, the weights, they weren't that nice to your legs the day before. (laughs) Right. Yeah, for sure. You know, but again, everyone has the same situation, I think. But with that said, um, it's definitely a factor. There's no doubt, but again, I, I just, I knew this was a really, uh, I really knew, I, I really felt like this was my year. And I think it was helpful that the workout happened first day, uh, first, uh, a workout of second day and not towards the later, later stage of the competition. So I said, Hey, and, and honestly, when I left, uh, day two, I was like, hey, right back on track, all right? Just keep, keep yep. this momentum going. Again, I mean, I I knew the front squat when the workouts came out was going to be somewhat of a damage control, you know, for me. Um, so, I, you know, I said to myself, it got to be top 10. I mean, if I can stay in the top 10, then I'll be fine, you know? Um, and again, I didn't anticipate the 15th in the snatch workout. But, uh, but I also think, too, the 1RM is – it's almost out of your control in a sense because you're going to lift what you're going to lift. Now I do think some guys might've went too heavy, too fast. I had a great plan. I execute, I got five lifts in, you know? All right. You know, in five minutes, I got five lifts in. I, I, I had that planned out. I did it exactly the way I planned it out. Um, and I finished seventh, which I was happy with. And then I, again, after that workout, I didn't really look at the leaderboard a lot, but you know, Kern is like a leaderboard, like maniac. He's looking like re hitting refresh on the regular. So, um, all she said to me that night was like, ah, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. So once he said that <laughs> I took a look at it and I realized that I was tied and I was going into one of my best workouts. So, um, yeah, I think when workouts aren't, don't come out the way you think they're going to, um, you, you really just have to, you know, like, you know, stay on track because look, don't, don't, cr- I think CrossFit does this to you all the time. You look at the workout and, and members can relate to this. You look at the workout you're like, oh, okay, wall ball. And, and then you're like, oh my God, that was so impossible. I didn't think it was going to be that hard, you know? All right. Or you go into a workout and you think it's impossible. And when you're done, you're like, oh, you know what? I, I thought it was going to be a lot harder kind of, you know? Um, so I think that happened to me. I thought I was going to do good in the snatch, and I didn't. I didn't think I was going to do that great in the next two workouts, and I did. So, sorry. Um, that's my dog. Oh, you're um, good. <laughs> but, sorry. Um, <laughs> I got dogs. What am I going to do? You know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, 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 because I had a feeling all year that this was my year. I wasn't going to let the 15, you know, get in the way of that. So my mentality didn't really change much. Um, and I was fortunate that I I, 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 I I got it together for the next two workouts. And then that helped to carry me out for the rest of the way. So you head into the final event and it's essentially a three-way tie for first place. Like anything, you know, you three were far ahead of fourth place they're basically more than 100 points clear yeah like jammed close together talk to me about your mindset in that workout and then i'm really interested to hear what your strategy was not just for the workout but for the workout in the context of being that close to those two because watching it was very interesting from a coaching perspective but i want to hear sort of how you thought about it first i mean i thought i had a really good opportunity going into the final to win. Um, 
You know, I mentioned that the the other two guys that I was chasing were bigger athletes. I was tied with Sean and nine points behind Jamie. Um, and even in the warm up, you know, for people who may have never been in a you know big uh, a competition where everybody's warming up in the same area, you all know who you are, and everybody's kind of like corner eye looking, you know, like what they're putting on the bar and how the muscle oh, yeah. ups are looking, you know, and and because we had the ring muscle up workout the uh um the, the two days prior or the day the day before we uh that we did the standard on day three you know i i did realize that some of those guys were struggling on the ring muscle up all right so i i, I did think that if they if if they weren't proficient in high volume repetitions on the muscle up that i had a really good chance um you know i i was i was I, I probably only heard my judge until I finished the workout um, and then saw you guys and, you know, my family yeah. and my girl and Evelyn and everybody. Because um, I, I, again, that was another workout that I executed 100%. The only thing I was concerned about was, am I going to hold on to the dumbbell on the one arm for the whole time, you know? And yep. I wound up doing eight on the one arm. And then I switched half and half on both other arms. And I always started with my weaker one, you know, so I felt, yep. you know, good about going into the next movement. Um, I knew I was going to go eight, eight, four, and then eight, four, four. Um, I do. I, um, I, I did hear Hunter in the background after I dropped on the second set of four, like, okay, you can do four again. You know, like, you know, I, I heard yep. him in the, in the audience. Um, and I, that's, it was almost like he was saying what I was thinking in a way, you know, like I knew dropping down from four was going to be fine. Actually, I did have a little bit of an advantage. I wasn't a fan of how the setup was where, you know, the person you were chasing was across from you, not next to you, you know, even though Don't I get was, Hunter fired up again, Don't, yeah, yeah, <laughs> man, even though Sean was, I was tied with Sean and he was next to me. Um, I did notice he was getting a few no reps on the, uh, on the, on the thrusters for depth. Um, I think he got some got no reps on, the bar, muscle ups on the bar muscle up. I know he got, a, I think he got one or two on the ring muscle up for feet above the rings as well. Mm. So, um, but that was it on the when, bar. Yeah. When I came, when I got done with the 12 bar muscle ups, I looked straight across as I was walking towards the dumbbell and I saw Jamie drop from the bar. Okay. Um, so I was like, okay, like this is going to be really tight. And, and another thing is I didn't see his judge's hand up, you know? All right. So when I, when I went, when I was walk when I dropped down from the bar and I started walking towards my dumbbell, I noticed that after he had dropped, he turned around to go back to the to the uh, bar muscle up. So I was like, he's not even done with 12 yet. All right. So I had a really good opportunity there. And I knew I was like, hey, it you just you got to put your foot down. So when I picked up the dumbbell for 16, I went eight, eight. Um, I, I, I my plan was eight, four, four. I dropped after the eight and Sean had pretty much just got to the rig. And I'm like, listen, if, if you don't fall apart, this is it. You got it, you know? And I think I chicken winged my first one. And then I did four, uh, three nice ones. And then I came down, chicken winged my first one, chicken winged my, uh, sorry, got a good one on my second. And then the third, fourth were, listen, at that point, <laughs> you know, somebody was saying to me like, oh, that the last two didn't look so good. I'm like, that's like the 34th and 36th rep. Shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. Like 700th rep of the goddamn weekend. Like, right. shut the you fuck know? up. So, they looked know? pretty good from our yeah, vantage they, they point. They looked really right. good. Yeah. And yeah. I, so, I think I was yelling because I was like, I could tell, I mean, you mentioned it, like not being able to know who the fuck you're competing against. It was, I think, I'm almost positive the context was like, you can like it's okay like you only have four like nobody's nobody's within killing distance of you no nobody you need to worry about is anywhere near you it's just like stick with your plan whatever the plan i didn't know what your plan was at the time but it was clear that it was like there was a clear plan being executed and it was like you've got four more like take your time you can do four more and win the crossfit games 
Yeah, I mean, another thing is too, Hunter, is um, again, I, I also think it's experience in a competition and understanding where you are and what you need to have happen. I knew I needed some people between us, you know? And again, I didn't know how much Jamie was starting to struggle with the bar muscle-ups at that point, you know? So the guy next to me, um, Eric Stevenson, he was pretty close to, I mean, he finished like right after me. Yeah, um, he was, so, he was one, 1. 1.7 seconds behind you. Yeah, exactly. So I, I knew I was a little ahead of him and I wanted to make sure like I was actually glad he was kind of moving that fast because again, I didn't really know I didn't know where anybody was except pretty much Sean and I I pretty much knew that I needed see I needed four people to get in between us, not three. Three would have made up the difference, but I would have lost a tiebreaker because uh Jamie had won two events and I had only won one. So um I needed to get four people in between us and again kudos to having a bigger field because let's say there's only 10 in that in our division at that point all right you know i mean like you're you're, now maybe they change the scoring at that point too but if they don't you're talking about now i need a lot of help joel took first i take second and now i need four people to get in between us so uh does that happen i don't know you know um uh, it did. It did in a, in a field of fifteen, and it helped me out. But I did know that Richard was was pretty close to me, and I was kind of taking my time. But I did feel like I can get in front of him. And uh, so when I dropped and he dropped, I started to look around a little bit, and then I, you know, I kind of came over to you guys and I saw Drew just going like this. He was just you going didn't. Like this. That was a that was a good moment because I've learned over the years. I know what the math is every single time and I know who I need to watch. So I had counted the people in between and you were like more than safe. And when I told you you won the CrossFit games, you were like, nah, 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 no, hold on. Just, I, I, let's just make sure. <laughs> yeah, that's just was, a superstition that was super funny. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But again, oh, you know, great. I mean, you know, you guys have the, the luxury too of, you know, kind of seeing that kind of center field sure. view, yeah. you know, of what's going on. You know, a lot of times when you're in, in the moment. But again, even though, um, uh, I, I again, I, I knew I had to push a little bit. I couldn't, like, sit back because, again, I knew Richard was, was pretty close to me. You don't know who's behind you, you know, to, to Hunter's point. You know, you don't really know what you're dealing with across. Maybe if we were doing bar muscle-ups facing in, maybe you would be able to see that. But I get, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a spectator you know, view that they're looking forward to as well. So, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, once I, once I got up to the bar, I I, I knew I was going to be in front of Sean. Um, just, you know, again, I, I think I did eight bar muscle ups on the, I did, I did eight bar muscle ups on the first set before he even got to the bar pretty much. So I, I, I did have a really good feeling and I said, listen, just go four, four, you know, and you'll be fine. And, uh, and it all worked out. It was great. How'd you feel in the moment? Like once you really knew your family was obviously right there, um, eighth year getting after this, you know, at the CrossFit games every time, how did it feel in the actual moment itself? Yeah, it was great. You know, I mean, I wanted to like do an interview and tell people I'm going to Disney world. I mean, it was just, uh, it was, um, it, it, yeah, again, I think it, what's also really special is the fact that, you know, my parents were there. You know, my girlfriend's there, my sister's there. There's also some friends that I have that were there, root me on. There's, I mean, my phone blew up of screenshots of the video of, uh, you know, I think, you know, uh, Sean Woodland did a great job with the announcing. You know, there's a there's a point in there where I kind of like get down into a squat and then I like sit down and fall and lay back. I mean, he he hit it at that point I knew. I had able to look around and see how many people were done. Um, so I was like, you know, I, I was doing the math as well and I knew I had done it and just, you know, taking that opportunity kind of like just enjoying the moment, you know, like just looking up into the ceiling and, you know, I got up, I went over to Evelyn. I said, we did it because it is, it's a team effort. You know, again, I'm out there doing the work and, uh, and doing it, but, you know, the sacrifices that she makes for me to get the training in, whether it's home uh, or it's doing things at the gym. Um, 
you know, having the support of your friends and your family there, it, it, it was, it was a great moment. And, uh, and I'm glad, I'm glad I, 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 I'm glad it happened. You know, obviously, um, it, it felt great. It, again, I, I never felt like it was a relief. Like finally I did this. It just, it was just, it was, it was just, it was, it was hard to take the smile off my face. I felt really, really good about it. And then every day it kind of felt even better, you know, all right. We're, Again, you maybe hear from people you haven't heard from a long time, getting some messages and and getting the perspective of other members. Like I, I had some members that aren't even at my gym anymore. They were at my old gym and they were like, I remember when you were, you know, learning bar muscle up and here you go, able to do like 36 of them. So messages like that were great to get. That's awesome. That's very cool. Um, so a couple people asked me this question and it might come off as controversial. It's not intended to be um, in any way, but was there any added like motivation or like, did you feel different with it being Sean that you were next to competing against and beating? Yeah. Listen, it's, it's always great to, you know, beat people who are pretty much the face of your division. You know? Yeah. I mean, Sean was the face of the 40 to 44 year old division. I think he wanted it every year you know i think so yeah um and to 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 beat athletes that you're looking at as the standard and or or what if or or hey that's the level you got to get to if you want to win it you know if that's if that's your goal well you better raise your game because these guys are really good um yeah i mean it definitely it I don't know if it makes it any sweeter. It probably makes it sweeter for other people, you know, who kind of want to see the champ get beat. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of people that want to see Grub lose, you know, all right? You know, I mean, I think there'll be people that are like, okay, I mean, enough of him. He's won enough already, you know, let it, let other people win. So, yeah. but for me personally, you know, it didn't matter who was there. I mean, it's nice to beat, again, there were four former champs. It was, it was nice to, to get above Joel you know, um, who beat me in yeah, 2019. Sure. Um, yeah. and, 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 and I, and I like Joel a lot. I have a lot of respect for Joel and I, I would consider him a friend in the sport. No doubt. He's a great guy. Um, and again, in 2019, he was just better than me. And that loss motivated me to win this year, a hundred percent. Um, so it was good to beat, it was good to beat everybody. I mean, Clinton Paddock is a really good friend of mine. It's good to beat him all the time on a regular, you know? Um, but because of Sean's accomplishments in this sport and the division, yeah, it felt great to uh, to be able to beat somebody that I had been, you know, trying to get to their level for a really long time. Yeah, no doubt. That's another thing we battle with some of our younger athletes is they get, for the first few times, they get into the room with the names. And they could be a name because of their accomplishments they could be a name you know because they you know get have you know big endorsement contracts whatever it is and it's like at the end of the day what you did in preparation and what you've turned yourself into as an athlete is what's going to matter out here so there's these like moments of being starstruck and it's like i don't belong here with these people and it's like i mean i've seen your scores these last few months and they don't belong with you you know, in a lot of these instances. So I think it's cool when you get those moments to like truly prove to yourself. I mean, the dude had like the, he they didn't even call him Sean Ramirez. He had the, he was famous enough to have the one, the Ram. Right, like, right, you know, right. Just that, Ram. that short name yeah. and everyone knew who we were talking about when you do that. So, so yeah, I, I had a few people ask me about that. Um, Hunter, I don't know if you have, have any other questions. Um, um, Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask one because I, I feel like it's a after the after the the games itself. I think it was a it's a hot topic. But how how was what were your and and to not to put you in a weird spot because I know you interact with Bob and a lot of the legends guys frequently. But what was your take on the the programming? Yeah, I I, I like the program. And listen, I, I think the programming. I think ten workouts they covered a lot. I really do. Um, sure. So, uh, again, you could, I think, I don't think there's a competition you can do and not criticize the programming, you know, whether it's you like it or you don't like it. I mean, I think, was I surprised there was no rowing in there? 
Yeah. All right. You know, I was surprised there was no handstand push-ups. Um, but I do think it's always tough to run a competition and have and, – and, and make everybody happy from the workouts. I actually, I actually think – I think the one thing that missed as far as the testing would have been maybe something longer than 20 minutes, you know, um, which I think quite frankly would have benefited me. All right. Um, to, for, for another, you know, cause I, I have a, I have a pretty, pretty good motor on a long workout. Um, so if I was going to be critical about anything, maybe that they had missed and that might've been some maybe longer monostructural, I mean, I know the run, the run workout, we were going outside. Safety was a, I think safety was a really big concern this year after what had happened prior. So I think there were some things that were mindful. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, maybe they made some changes. All right. Because of it. Um, but again, we were running outside in Alabama and it was hot even for the short time that we were out there. But I do think maybe a longer style workout might've been something that even Bob and Joe may have gone back and said, Hey, you know what, moving forward, we're going to need to have another longer, uh, longer monostructural type element um, to the games. But as far as the programming, I mean, again, I, I think 10 workouts is necessary. You know, I really do. I don't, I think six and seven workouts is just, I don't think it's enough. I don't, you know, um, you know, Hunter, I think that I knew the games was going to be a very different spectacle than it was when you're there with the individuals. Now I was fortunate to see that side of it, you know, but there's no doubt it was going to be different. It had to be different, you know? Um, yeah. So you're, you're, you're talking about way more athletes now, you know, we were totally spoiled when masters and teenagers were mixed in with the individuals. We got, tons of clothing and tons of shoes and gift cards. And, you know, I knew if you were going there for the swag this year, you were going to be very disappointed, you know? All right. You know, <laughs> I mean, if, if you were expecting a ridiculously sized vendor village and, um, you know, athlete services, I knew all that stuff was going to be smaller. All right. Because I think we are, we're not the main show now. Now that we are, now that we have our own individual show, I think it has a ton of potential to get better and better every year. Just like the just like the individuals get first year games. I mean, again, I think it's a process, and I think if the masters who really showed up well, I mean, listen, you guys have been to games before. When you go to the teenager events and the masters events. There's nobody in the stands. It's crickets. It's your five family members that, you know, might have decided to come that year. All right. At least this year, the competitive environment was way funner. There was, you could feel the crowd level rise as workouts got closer or when people hit big weights. If you hit a big weight at, at Madison and, and, and inside the Coliseum, no one knew. No one, you know, no one was watching. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think there, there, there were definitely some, like, uh, there were definitely some things, like, look, if you were a 35-year-old athlete and you came and you used to be a games athlete, individual, like, like use Will Morad, his experience from how he was treated, like, not treated, but, like, like how he was kind of, like, given a lot of stuff and the spectacle, the grandeur of it. I mean, when you got out off of the plane in Madison, Everything was, hey, CrossFit Games is here, you know, all right? You know, that type of environment was way different in, in Alabama for just the Masters. You know, again, you don't get all the swag that you got. But I do think that they're on the right track, that they're, they're, they're creating a, an, an environment for Master athletes to have a really good competition that's just for them where they're the stars and people come to see them. And you can start to build the stories about those athletes instead of saying, Hey, here's Tia Toomey and, you know, Matt Frazier. And then there's a couple of things going on over here. And then there's something going on over there too, if you want. So For sure. I, I do kind of think that uh, from a programming standpoint, you know, I didn't mind it. I, I, I think that they were good to be critical. Maybe you got to do one longer workout, 
And um, from like just an overall experience, I mean, again, I, I think the competition was really well done. And, um, but I do think the environment might be a lot different than some other athletes are used to, I would say. Yeah, for sure. All right. Time for final thoughts. Um, I have three. First one, that many athletes and having the CrossFit games hand them to you and say, like, figure this out had to be really fucking hard. <laughs> figuring out the three stages and the schedule and all of that like there's a lot of a lot of empathy on my end for like here you go good luck like because that's that was a lot um absolute like shining moment for me of the masters crossfit games was the fitness level top to bottom in every division it was incredible like i was blown away the things that you would see just walking past you know, a division that you didn't have any athletes in and seeing the scores and comparing them again. I mentioned it earlier to someone 15 years younger than them. Um, and some of the stuff that, you know, Hunter and I were very sort of closely intertwined with the 35 to 39 women division. Some of the stuff that was being done out on the competition floor, like there's a lot of cloudy, you know, situations surrounding crossfit hq and crossfit games as a whole like hats off to the athletes top to bottom like incredible fitness level incredible skill level like that is still progressing at that level like i'm a snowboarding nerd and like they always add a 180 to their spins every year and you know when i was young it was like a 720 was a big deal and now they're doing 15 60s or whatever it is um that's how it feels at the CrossFit Games level with what the athletes are able to accomplish. Um, so I think that is incredibly important and something that needs to be put out there. Last but not least, obviously have to bring it back to the beginning. Justin, congratulations, man. Um, you're, you're the kind of guy that, like I said, really embodies the things that we try to teach, the things that the reason why we have this podcast to try and get these concepts out to people, whether it's, you know, mindset or being smart about your training or whatever it is. So, um, congratulations. And we're super stoked that it was you, um, being the first one out there because you, you do a really good job sort of representing what we do. Thank you. Hunter, yeah, I think quick. my, yeah, go for it. Is that a uh, prefontaine behind you? Yeah, it's actually a Sherby holdover, but it's it's stuck around and it's a it's definitely a worthy worthy wall art. Yeah, man, I love it that says, quote. Uh, I used it in my post. Yeah, That's to awesome. give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Is the right. uh, is the quote up here? We yeah. used to have the the best pace is a suicide pace, and today's a good day to die. Yeah, it's up a good on one. the uh, inside of a bay door. <laughs> I might need days. to come back, Hunter. <laughs> I, I mean, fuck, I didn't get rid of it. <laughs> that might need to come back. That's a good one. Um, yeah, my my final thoughts are uh, kind of goes back to something you said early on, Justin, and that's the um, it's it's a, a kind of a nod to athletes who maybe want to skip certain steps and get to the finish line before they, quite frankly, deserve to get there. Um, the the number of years, you know, I've, I've been throughout the interview been just on your CrossFit Games page so I could kind of reference you know years and, and placements and whatnot and uh, there's a lot of data on this fucking page because you've been in it for a really long time and it's just kind of that again that reminder to athletes that like you don't skip if 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 the goal is as big as you claim or think or want it to be there's no way to the, the, you don't skip steps and in a sport like this where there are just so many skill, like you can be an exceptionally talented athlete, a naturally gifted athlete, but there is, there are still things that you are going to run into as, you know, stopping points, hard stops in your CrossFit journey. It's not to say that some people can't, you know, move, move up the leaderboard faster than others, but there really is no way to get exceptional at the sport, to stand on top of the podium, to stand on the podium on any step of that podium. Uh, without having put in a shitload of time, effort, and, you know, what you said, it was like, I, I tried to learn the movements correctly. I did learn the strict muscle up before the kipping muscle up. Like, fuck, 2010 L1, L1 Flowmasters are are just so happy right now to hear someone say that. Um, and it just, it, it's like, yeah, like, 
that's how it works, ladies and gentlemen. Like, if you want to get to the top of the game, like, you learn how to do things right. You don't skip steps. You put your work in. You earn the right to say, like, yeah, I've developed all of these skills and I can, you know, I, I know that when I need to, I know when I need to take a deload, I know that I can take three days off or a week off and not miss out on anything. I know I don't need to be scrolling through Instagram wondering what Jason Grubb is snatching for me to know that I'm going to go into the CrossFit Games and I'm going to fucking win this year. Um, you don't you don't skip steps. You put in the work. So congrats again, man. That's that's fucking awesome. Thank man you. On Earth. Thanks, man. Uh, my final thought is uh, let's run it back. You know, let's go. I mean, I had seen no like reason that. why not to run it back next year. Might as well. Know? Yeah. I mean, um, I've, uh, he doing? <clears throat> I've taken this, you know, I, again, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of ease back into like some training and whatnot. Um, and I, I, I always tell people this too, as well, that are trying to get a lot better. You know, I get that, you know, sometimes you, you might not be able to put all the work in that you want to get in that day. All right. Pick the thing you're worst at and do that. You know, a lot of times I'll see like the bitch work and I'll be like, oh, geez, like the last thing I want to do is sit on a rower for 40 minutes. But you know what? I'm going to do that because I think you need to have that being uncomfortable feeling because, again, it's it, it's not an easy sport and you got to be a little mental to be good at it. Um, and uh, but, yeah, final thoughts for me is let's run it back. And I appreciate all all the programming and, you know, obviously – you know, um, you know, having Gabe as a resource and you guys as a resource has been extremely helpful over all these years. And again, I can't appreciate you guys more. Thanks a lot for the support. Thanks, Thanks for Dave. taking the time, dude. Um, and congrats again. We'll see you next time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into another episode of the Misfit Podcast. Make sure you head to the link in bio on our Instagram so you can get signed up for training camp October 11th through the 13th, just outside of Philadelphia at CrossFit Raid. Misfitathletics.com for your individual programming needs. Teammisfit.com for your affiliate programming needs. See you next week. Misfit.